Hello friends, I'm Jim. I like to make beautiful photos and I believe we're all capable of doing so. I'm here to inspire you, show you that it doesn't have to be hard, frustrating, or even time consuming. In fact, it's a lot of fun. Let's get started. Today I'm gonna to be in Luminar Neo with this photo, which I've slightly edited just for exposure purposes. In other words, I brighten the photo. But what I wanna talk about is what often happens if you don't control color in your photo. And what often happens is you get this, which is basically an oversaturated, over-the-top looking photo with every color just kind of pushed too far, what I affectionately like to call clown vomit. Yes, I said clown vomit, but that's what it looks like. It's just every color is over the top. So there's a few key tips that I'm gonna share, three in particular, that will help you control colors so you can still get a beautiful result like this without going over the top. Let's get into Luminar Neo and get started. Okay, here's the photo, and to show you how I started, that's the base unedited photo, and there it is after making a couple of edits in Develop Raw, which I said were basically to brighten the photo. So here's what I often see people doing. They may have, by the way, gone into the color section here and adjusted saturation or vibrance in Develop Raw, but if not, I often see people go straight to color, and they'll go to saturation and vibrance because, hey, I want a saturated, vibrant color. That sounds good to me let's do it then they'll go to landscape and they'll get golden hour and let's bring up those warmer tones yeah that sounds good hey while we're at it let's go into toning and get a little bit warmth a little bit more warmth in the highlights to get some of that sunset color by the way while we're at it let's get into color harmony brilliant yeah i want the photo to be more brilliant sure and i want it to be warmer Ooh, split color warmth yeah let's get some more warmth and as you can see, very quickly, you end up with a photo that's incredibly saturated, which basically is lacking control over specific colors and doing everything to every color present in the photo. In other words, the orange in the sky is over the top, the pink in the sky is over the top, the blue in the sky is over the top, even the green in the trees is over the top. This is basically demonstrating that you're doing what I consider three things that are probably better not done. Let me start walking through those and show you an edit of a photo, how I would do it, keeping these three key tips in mind. Okay, here's another copy of that photo with the same base edits done. There's the original raw file. That's how it is now. Now, one of the first things that I think is important is to make a plan and go slow. You noticed in the last example, I just basically move through, snap, 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 move slider, move slider, get another tool, move slider, move slider, another tool, move slider, you get the point, right? I went over the top because I didn't have a plan. So in looking at this photo, what I would say is, hey, this was a beautiful sunset. I noticed that there's a lot of blue, there's some warmth in the clouds, but it's not very prominent. So what I wanna do is, as you know, the orange or yellow in the, those warmer tones, they play off of those cooler tones and the blue really well. So I kinda of wanna bring up some of that color contrast between the two different colors. But I wanna be careful that I don't go over the top with either one, but notice the warmth is less prevalent. So I wanna bring that up more while controlling the blue. So Number one, make a plan. Don't just start moving sliders. So for me, I don't know that I would actually start with color. If I did, I don't even know if I would use saturation. I might would go to vibrance, but just be careful because there's so much blue, that's gonna get a bit more vibrant. So if I went on vibrance, I would go pretty low, maybe like a 10. For me, bringing up the warm tones means going into landscape and getting golden hour. Now this one I can bring up quite a bit without overdoing it. I'm already at basically 50 and it's not over the top. I could even go higher. Now you wanna be careful, even at 100, that looks kinda okay. Um, so. Just be careful, every photo is gonna be different. I'm not gonna to go to 100. I'm gonna to go to like, let's say about 60 and stop there because I don't wanna push things too far because I'm also gonna use some other tools. The next tool I'm gonna to use is not gonna to be toning. In fact, I'm gonna to go to color harmony. I want a little bit more brilliant photo, but keep in mind as I drag that, if you look at it, everything gets more brilliant. So be very careful with what you do here. If you go brilliance, that's kind of like saturation in that everything starts popping, but I do want some more uh, warmth in the photo, so I'm gonna bring that one up a little bit. I'm at 22, I think that looks pretty nice. Just be careful if you go too far, 
it's basically obviously warming up the entire photo and you're losing that contrast between the cooler tones in the blue and those warmer tones. It's basically making everything warm. So I would bring up the warm tones here, but I would be a little bit careful with it and not go too high. And then if I wanna bring up the warmth just a little bit more, maybe I will try toning. I'm in highlights, I'm gonna take the saturation a little bit higher and give it a little bit more of that warmth. And I think that looks pretty nice. Overall, nice, calm look without being over the top. And the key thing, and this is tip number two, is that you limit the amount of tools that you use and the extent to which you use them. For that previous one that was over the top, I used a lot of tools and I went really high on those tools. In this photo, I actually used probably the same number of tools, but I was very careful with how far I pushed the sliders. Because remember, these tools or filters have a compound effect. You add one and do something, and then you add another one on top, and it starts to accumulate that edit, which is how you end up being over the top with your final result. So limit the number of tools that you use and the extent to which you use them. Now the other thing, and this is the third tip that I didn't employ during the first example of being over the top and creating that clown vomit kind of look, is not just going into color and avoiding saturation and vibrance, but going into HSL and specifically managing the saturation levels of individual color channels. So on that over the top photo, what I really needed to do if I was gonna stay with that look is come in and control specific color channels in HSL. Here, maybe I wanna bring down the saturation of the blue, or I could even bring it up a little bit, but the point is make sure you're controlling it by employing the HSL sliders. Maybe I wanna pop that orange a little bit more, or maybe even there's a little bit of red here. Maybe I'll pull back a little bit of the saturation in the blue. And this overall change, there it is before, there it is after is very light, but HSL, very important because it gives you control over specific color channels, which is very different than my over the top clown vomit example, where I basically took every color and went extremely to the right. You'll notice in this one, I've got the yellows or warm tones popping quite well. There's the base photo, there's the current photo, but I've still got nice blues without going over the top. And by the way, maybe you noticed the green is not really popping at all because honestly, I don't care about the green and the trees. That's essentially a silhouette for me. And in fact, I could go in with the exposure slider, mask it in with mask AI and just darken that to create an actual silhouette. The bottom line is be careful, make a plan, limit the number of tools that you use, and also use HSL to control specific color channels. Now, here's a bonus idea or bonus tip that could help you get the result that you want. Let's say you've got this result and you like it, but you feel like it just needs a little something extra. That's where Accent AI can come in and give you a little extra pop in your photo just be careful because it pops a lot of things. It's an AI tool, as you know, doing a lot of things, contrast, color, all kinds of things. So don't go do that because you will once again get a really over the top look. Instead, I would incrementally just go really slow and just move this thing up. So maybe a 15 looks pretty good. If I look at the before and the after, that's added a nice little bit of pop. Bonus tip number two is also to look at super contrast because that impacts light values in the highlights, the midtones, and the contrast. So it gives you incredible control over the light. And as you're creating or enhancing contrast in those specific tonal areas, you're also impacting the way the colors look. So you could come in here and just be, again, really gentle with it because you can see I've already popped color quite a bit and I've only done a small move in each of those three tonal areas. There it is before, there it is after. Now you can use highlights balance to come in uh, and further refine the tonal areas or mid-tone balance to get a little bit better overall look and same with shadows balance. And in fact, that shadows balance actually helps me create a little bit more of a silhouette there in the tree line at the bottom of the photo. So if I look at my before and my after, that's my current image, which has given me a lot more control over the colors across the entire image without blowing out or going crazy with any particular color. So if you found this video helpful, you might wanna check out that video as well, where I dive into some specific areas that can really help you pop your image. That's it for this one, my friends. Thanks, take care, and adios.